Welcome back everyone to more NASCAR Heat 4 at Knee Pit Gaming. Today's setup video takes us to New Hampshire Motor Speedway, a track that I absolutely love to run because it offers you so many options. As the name and the thumbnail would suggest, we're only going to be focusing on the cup cars for setups today. However, I have no doubt that the information should translate just fine over to Xfinity and trucks. One of the big changes for the physics in NASCAR Heat 4 is the addition of tire wear. Now tire wear is going to have a huge effect on the setup that you're running, so it makes sense that we need to, before we get into setup discussion, talk a little bit about the options that I use while I'm testing for these setups. So we'll start off in the options menu under the gameplay tab, and then we're going to scroll down to tire wear and fuel consumption. Normally I do this on 2X. I don't like to go any higher because I do like long green flag runs, but I understand that some of you like to go all the way up to 4X. Player tire wear rate, I like more wear. I like maximum tire wear, so I generally test on more wear and less grip under the grip fall off. So keep that in mind. If you're playing with different settings such as less wear and more grip, then that's going to change the setup that you're going to want to use in the races. So keep that in mind as we're talking about setups. What I'll try to do in each video is let you know the particular settings because I don't go for maximum tire wear at every track, just where I feel that it is appropriate. And also keep in mind on the driving tab, there is a setting that you'll need to match up for the AI. So if you want maximum tire wear, then you need to have that on both the player car and the AI car. Or if you're going for less tire wear and more grip, then change that for the AI as well. Before we jump into the setup discussion, let's first talk a moment about the track itself. As I mentioned in the intro, this track is a lot of fun for me to drive because it presents so many options. While my faster laps might come closer to the center of the track where I can allow the car to really roll through the corners with minimal braking on entry, it is also very possible that when you're in traffic during race conditions that you're going to need to move around the track some as the AI will likely be in your preferred groove from time to time. So with that in mind, my goal for today is to provide a setup that will work well whether you need to go all the way down to the apron or all the way up closer to the wall in the corners. Any groove on the track is really viable uh, since we don't have to worry about marbles and, and, and build up uh, from the tires on the track. You can really go just about anywhere and sometimes when the AI are two or three wide in front of you, you may need to go everywhere. Something to keep in mind when you're choosing a groove around the track is that as you get closer to the bottom, remember that that very first groove uh, right next to the yellow line in the corners as well as the apron both have a good bit less banking than what you're dealing with further up the track. On corner entry, that's going to mean the car is not going to want to turn quite as much when you get down there on that. However, when you get back to the throttle, you can actually use the apron or that first groove uh, to de-wedge the car and help the car to rotate. So keep those things in mind. A very popular way of driving the car uh, in real life is to actually float the car into the corner, use sort of the middle of the track, the, the second and third groove on entry, and then through the center, but then on exit to actually drive the car down uh, closer to that first groove or apron uh, to really de-wedge the car and allow it to rotate quite nicely. And that can give you the run you might need in order to make a pass uh, on the car immediately in front of you. So the setups I'm going to show you today are pretty stable. I didn't go for outright speed and I didn't back uh, off the speed enough for... Uh, those of you who run the aggressive tire wear and fall off settings, but I'm giving you a couple of options here that I think will give you both the stability as well as uh, the functionality that you're going to need to control the car regardless of what groove you're running. This first setup is geared more towards speed, although I didn't go as loose as I could have gone to get maximum speed out of the car. I had plenty to compete against the AI, which is really all I was concerned about. On the shock settings, the 3.5 settings seem to work very well here. I would actually like to be uh, more aggressive on the shocks, but found that there's just a few bumps, particularly on corner entry, uh, that would keep me 
from using that on something I post here on the channel. But certainly don't be afraid to go more aggressive on the shocks. Uh, using something like, say, a 7.9 setting on uh, all four tires, that should really help uh, to make for quicker transitions through the corners. And then always you can adjust corner by corner on the car and get optimal results. But again, I try to keep things fairly bland for what I post here on the channel and let you guys take it from there. Moving on to the weight settings, 51.5% front weight, 50% wedge. The 51.5% front weight is just to give some stability, particularly on entry and through the center of the corner, because in a setup geared more toward uh, qualifying type speed, you're going to be very aggressive on corner entry and very aggressive getting back to the throttle in the center of the corner. So a little bit more front weight will certainly help to stabilize the car. The more you increase the front weight, the more that it will want to tighten the car, particularly on corner entry and through the center. The lower the number you use for front weight, that will help the car to rotate more on corner entry. The wedge, the higher the number you use in wedge, that will tend to stabilize the car and tighten the car. It will make the car want to rotate slower through the corner. So if you're having trouble with uh, the car jumping loose on you, uh, particularly on corner entry or in the center, then simply increase that wedge number some. Here, because we're going uh, more for speed, I dropped it down to about 50.0, and that seemed to work well. Somewhere between 50.0 and 51.0 should work just fine, depending on whether you're going for more long run or more uh, short run speed. Moving on to the spring settings, 700 and 900 in the front, 400 and 450 in the rear. The front springs are a little bit softer than I normally use. Normally I will have either the left front or the right front at 1200 pounds, the max uh, spring that you can use in the front of the car. But here I like a little bit softer spring. In fact, we're going to be looking at something even a little bit different when we get to the second setup uh, in today's video. But 700 and 900 is about as stiff as I like to run here simply because of the heavier braking on corner entry, it's still not heavy, but a little bit softer spring seems to uh, contain that and give you a little bit more front grip on corner entry. In the rear of the car, only 50 pounds of split in the rear springs, and that is to help with corner exit, give you some uh, stability, some side bite in the car on corner exit. Increasing the amount of split in the rear springs to something like maybe 400 pounds in the left rear, 500 pounds or more in the right rear, will help the car to rotate more when you get back to the throttle on corner exit. Minimizing or lowering that rear spring split will tighten the car when you get back to the throttle and on corner exit. So keep that in mind as those are some uh, great ideas to loosen or tighten the car in different parts of the corner. Moving on to the tire settings, didn't spend a whole lot of time here. 11 and 12 pounds on the left side seemed to work uh, pretty good. 28 and 26 on the right sides, once again, seemed to work really well. On the right side uh, air pressures, the higher you get the right front number, the tighter the car is going to be overall. In the right rear, the more you increase this number, the looser the car is going to want to be, particularly on corner exit. So keep that in mind as you search for the proper inflation numbers that also give you the feel that you're looking for. Lower numbers overall on the tire pressure will give you a little bit more of a feeling of stability while it'll take away some top end speed. The top end speed isn't really uh, much of an issue at a place like New Hampshire, but something to keep in mind as you're moving from track to track. Moving on to the miscellaneous settings, plus two degrees of camber in the left front, minus 1.5 degree in the right front. You can certainly be a lot more aggressive than that with the camber in the front tires. However, I just didn't find that it was necessary and stable enough to post here on the channel, but certainly something I want to encourage you to try out, particularly for the qualifying setup. Moving on to the front sway bar, 1.315 uh, is pretty standard, but I've actually tested out at New Hampshire up a couple of clicks to 1.5 and then also down a click to about 1.1 or so. And both of those work. Increasing the front sway bar will tighten the car up, slow down the rotation, similar to what Wedge does. Uh, but here, the front sway bar will just tighten the car. It, the car will not want to rotate near as well. 
And that can be helpful depending on some of the other settings you're using in the car to help the car turn. Reducing the front sway bar will actually help the car to rotate more through the corners, but can introduce some instability if you get the car too low and the car can start to get a little bit twitchy and want to roll over too much in the corner. So something to keep in mind when you're adjusting the front sway bar. Moving on to the track bar, 11 inches on the left side, 10 inches on the right side. I use the left side track bar to adjust the corner entry. So if I need uh, help with rotation and make the car looser on corner entry, then I increase that left side track bar. If I need to tighten the car up on entry, then I lower the left side track bar. Right side track bar is used more for corner exit uh, or the center of the corner. So if I need to loosen the car on corner exit, then I will increase the right side track bar. And the opposite is also true. If I need to tighten the car on exit, then I will drop that right side track bar. Here you can see a little bit higher on the left than on the right side, and that just gives a little bit more side bite coming off the corner uh, to get that grip you need to be able to be more aggressive on the throttle. The brake bias I have used in practice anywhere from about 73 all the way up to about 78, and they both have their good and bad points. With the brake bias, the higher the number you use, that's the more front brake that you're dialing into it, and generally the tighter the car will want to be under heavy braking. The lower the number you use on the brake bias, it will put more rear brake in the car and the car will rotate better and tend to get looser. Particularly if you get too low on the brake bias, the car will want to snap loose on you uh, on corner entry. So keep that in mind as you adjust. 75% was a good middle of the road number to use here on the channel. Grill tape, I don't even think I adjusted it one time. Uh, I'm pretty sure that 40% was the default number when I came in here and because I know that it really doesn't affect the handling of the car unfortunately then there was really no reason to adjust it unless the car began to overheat and since that didn't happen I simply left it where it was. Wheel lock at 10 degrees steering offset at 0.05 both standard numbers for me because they work well uh, but by all means test out some different numbers for the wheel lock and steering offset and see how they work for you, the, particularly the steering offset is more of a comfort thing and a, and a preference uh, setting because the higher you get the steering offset, the more it will try to offset the uh, amount of pull to the left that you have in the car on the straightaways. So a higher number can help straighten out uh, the car on the straightaways with less pull to the left. But if you get that number too high, then it will introduce actually a pull to the right on the straightaways, which is certainly not something you want on an oval. Finally, moving down to the gear settings, I did make some adjustments in uh, first, second, and third gears here uh, to adjust these numbers, three, two, and 1.4 uh, work really well for me, but uh, by default, th those numbers uh, were had you turning more RPMs in those gears. For the rear end ratio, I went with the absolute highest number that could possibly work here um, and could translate nicely over a longer run. A 422 gear has me hitting the rev limiter uh, by the end of the straightaway, if not a little bit before that. And for me, I use that as a tool for when to start to apply the brakes a little bit and back out of the throttle. But uh, you can certainly lower this number to something like a, a 411 or, or whatever, and that will certainly lower the RPMs and can give you more speed at the end of the straightaway, particularly if you're looking for max speed. So that'll do it for the first setup. Now let's move into our second. The second setup is more geared toward a race setup and is a little bit tighter and a little bit more stable for the longer runs. For those of you who like to use the more aggressive tire wear and fall off settings, then you're probably gonna need to tighten this up a little bit more, but I wanted to keep some speed in the car for those of you who use either the minimum tire wear or the normal tire wear settings. This should give you a good starting point for those. A lot of the settings here uh, in this setup are shared from the other setup, but this gives a little different feel. So we're going to focus on some of the differences here between the first setup and this second one. The front weight, a little bit lower. Wedge is a little bit higher. So I wanted to back off of the front weight because I didn't want to get the car too tight over the course of a long run. So I backed off a little bit. You can certainly back off a good bit more than that on the front weight, but again, I wanted to keep the car a little bit tighter for the longer run. 
the wedge number, as we talked about before, the higher you get this number, the tighter and more stable the car will want to be. So I decided to introduce a little bit more wedge here in, um, in a race style setup in order to keep uh, the right rear on the car for a little bit longer on that long run in more aggressive tire wear settings. Spring settings, you can see we are lower on all four corners of the car, 600 and 650 in the front, 350 and 400 in the rear. Again, this makes for a different feel in the car. As you increase or decrease the front springs in particular, you're going to introduce a very different feel. What I find is that uh, the stiffer I go in the front of the car with the front springs, the, the less I can tolerate heavy braking on the car. The car is uh, very quick to react on the stiffer spring, and that's because as soon as you get to the brakes, the car wants to shift the weight forward, and heavier front springs will send that weight directly to the tires and not give you as much margin for error. So the lower number you use in the front springs, that'll give you a, just a little bit more margin of error and allow you to use the brake a little bit more on corner entry without having to worry about disrupting the car as much. The rear springs are a little bit softer, still keeping that 50 pounds of rear spring split. Uh, but again, this is just to save that right rear tire over the course of a long run. Now, the rest of the setup is very similar or identical to what we've already seen in the original setup. I just want to, as we close this video out, remind you that on a track, particularly a heavy braking track uh, where you're spending a lot of time either on the brakes or off the throttle, it makes a huge difference in how you drive the car. You can literally change the entire uh, tire wear settings just by changing how you uh, adjust your entry, how aggressive you are on either entry or getting back to the throttle. You can really hurt the right rear tire by being too aggressive or save it for the course of a long run by hesitating just a little bit before getting back to the throttle and backing off on corner entry just a little bit earlier than you might want to for absolute best speed. So keep that in mind. Uh, adjusting your, your line and your way of driving can certainly help to save those tires over the course of a long run. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more NASCAR Heat 4.